Thanks for uh, joining me on Adam Scott Live. Oh, thank this you for cool. joining me on Quentin Brunson Live. Yeah, it's weird that we're taping our shows at the same time. Yeah, but it's a new initiative, and I was down to try it. Um, new concept, and I'm, I'm the first one to try it. Yeah. Um. I've... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Quinta. My dog, Adam. That's me. <laughs> this is cool that that we're finally shooting our pilot, uh, yeah. Quinta and Adam, live. I've, I know. We've talked so much about it. Yeah, years. And finally the world can see what we have to offer as the best guest host the world has ever seen. I can't wait for everyone to see it. But since it's live, they're seeing it right now. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, anything you do, it's live. It's, it's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Abbott Elementary is your show. Yes. And I love your show so, so much. <laughs> My family and I, it's our show. We go through phases of watching a show together and we can't watch it unless all four of us are there. Yes. And we've moved Aww. through and Abbott is our latest yes. and greatest. Yay, that's um, my favorite thing to hear about it, by the way. It's, that it's like family appointment viewing. Totally, which is really hard to find. Mm -hmm something that you can watch. And they're yeah. teenagers now, too. So it's hard to find something that we all want to watch, but is also, like, cool enough right. for them. Right. Because it used to be, you know, Bob's Burgers was it for a while. Right, yeah, absolutely. They can't all gather and watch Severance? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> we can, but it, it makes me far too nervous. Got it, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Miss Howard, you remind me so much of my favorite teacher from the third grade, Miss Elliot. She was well dressed, good with kids, a wizard with a glue gun. Thank you, Janine. That is very kind yeah, of you. Yeah, I, I wanted to be just like her, actually. I was like obsessed with her. She wrote my report card note needs friends her own age, a bit clingy. She was a hoot. We chatted a, a couple months ago, and I know something you mentioned that I thought was really interesting was how much a fan you are of the network sitcom and yeah. the idea of creating something that can be broadly sent out to all households mm -hmm. and anyone can watch. And then it, it's funny because then you, you're, you know, kind of being credited with reviving the network sitcom. Yeah. I'm wondering how that lands with you. That's a bold, That's big a lot. statement. I know, yeah. I've okay. seen that. You know, this experience has really taught me that I can't control what people say, good yeah. or bad. I don't know, it's been interesting. Because I do think that while Abbott has been successful, which I'm super grateful for, I think people have been doing great work in the network space yeah. for a really long time. Like, I would be lying if I didn't say I knew that young Sheldon has been pulling in massive numbers, yep. even their reruns do. There are shows this season even, like Ghost on CBS, which yeah. is really great, just a joyful, delightful show to watch. American Auto and Grand Crew on NBC. I felt like a lot of people helped make the network space exciting again. I yeah. really feel that way. It was a combined effort, and I think that Abbott, um, Abbott just feels like a great show for everyone to connect that narrative to. Uh huh. But kind I, of a culmination of this yeah. revival that's happening exactly. more broadly. Yeah, yeah, I I have had people tell me, and I've done it myself. They're like, yeah, I watch American Auto, then Grand Crew, then uh, then Abbott, then Blackish. Like, they're the people yeah. like went back to like TGIF again with you know network sitcoms. So, and I think people are missing that feeling because you know you were you were part of it. Parks and Rec was that for me. I enjoyed having this thing that I could watch with friends and family that was easy. I think what was exciting about that time with Parks and Rec is Parks and Rec felt like a risk. Like mm -hmm. that like era of television felt like risky TV where you mm -hmm. were like almost couldn't believe you were seeing this on uh -huh. network sometimes. And that is a feeling I think that Abbott brings back. I think yeah. it brings back um, Oh, I'm used to maybe getting this on HBO, but or, right. or you know, or a streamer or cable, That's right. but not quite network. Meet me in the library at lunch. Did he say yes? Because otherwise, I found a live stream of some other school board's presentation that might help. Never mind, it's an SNL skit. Since I've been here, Ava's biggest improvements to the school include renaming the Wi-Fi network Bad Bitches Only, and using field trip money to put 26-inch rims on one of the buses. There's something about Abbott that's that great mixture of these razor-sharp jokes 
and a, a little subversion here and there, like like that. Yeah. Thing, <laughs> which is just so it's so, it's so deeply funny. Uh, but also the the kindness in the show. And my mom was a public school teacher, so there's something that kind of hits me squarely in the heart every week mm -hmm. watching the show because it, it's so clear that you have an affection and such a respect for mm -hmm. for teachers mm -hmm. and and you really don't see that it's a really specific thing um, that you don't see uh, that much in entertainment yeah um, where does that come from well first I didn't know your mom was a public school yeah, teacher yeah, yeah. I don't know if you said that before but I, I don't think I, I don't think I did amazing. to you but you talked to me a lot about Star Trek I, I did yeah, yeah. That, that was our full three-hour conversation with Star Trek. <laughs> um, she I, or you know with that affection, the one you're talking about, is one I'm sure you share. It's different to have a teacher, and it's different to be a student, but to be a child of a teacher, mm -hmm. I think, is a unique experience. Mm -hmm. I went to the school where my mother taught. Uh -huh. I was in her kindergarten class, and then wow. I was at the school where she taught for the next five years. So yeah. I spent so much time with her riding to school, being you know, in school, but the relationship she had with my teachers was different than other parents to teachers. Yeah. It was, let's talk about Quinta, but let's also talk about this new curriculum that's com right. coming in, or right. this new principal, or this change that they're making this year. I just got to hear so much. And yeah. then um, after school, watching her um, work more <laughs> while I was in the classroom yeah. with her. And then we'd go home, you know, school would go out at three, but we'd go home at about five or six yep. by the time everything was said and done. And I'd sit there and play on her computers, but listen to her have discussions with parents and other teachers and administrators, and then yeah. we'd go home, and she'd work even more, yeah. yet somehow still like put food on the table. And so naturally I have this, I think, an insight that most people don't have, but I also have such a respect for the profession and a love that was formed through the love for my mother, but through her loving her colleagues. I, yeah. I came to love the people that she surrounded herself with. But yeah, I don't know. It's, I was thinking about your show, and actually this article just came out. I'm not sure if you saw it. It was talking about severance and Abbott and exploration of the workplace. I, I see like your face and like Barbara Howard's face. Uh -huh. and I was like, what is, why are these two together? But it was really insightful about how we look at the American workplace. Yeah. And Abbott brings forth this space where you can find love in the treachery of it all yeah. and how on your show the same thing happens with this group of people yeah. by the end and yeah. I thought that comparison was so interesting and I know that you didn't like write that show or anything but you're you're balancing so much because you're two people yeah what was that like from day to day do you just tap in in the morning and say here where we are here's where <laughs> we are at this scene or what's that like I remember getting there in like October of 2020 I just went straight to the set from the airport because I wanted to see what Ben Stiller had been putting together with his team. Uh -huh. been looking at photos on my phone for a long time. And so I went there and saw the sets. Yeah, where was that? It was on a stage in uh, Queens. Um, what? Yeah, and they built that main office with the green carpet right, and the that's low in, ceilings and stuff. In Queens. And then all those hallways yeah, that yeah, built yeah, too. Yeah. So once I actually stepped onto the set mm -hmm. and saw kind of the enormity of it, mm -hmm. I started getting a little freaked out. I assume this is about me acting as department chief today. Okay, uh, well, I mean, I've subbed for PD before, so it shouldn't be PD. that big is no longer with this company. I'm sorry? I said, PD is no longer with this company. Amy Poehler used to call it like starting a new show. Mm -hmm. You're at the bottom of Show Mountain. Mm -hmm. And you're like at base camp and there is a sheer face in front of you. Yeah. And <laughs> you just have to chip away yeah. and find the show. Pro too. Exactly. When it's a brand new show, yeah. it's a whole different, show mountain is right in front of you yeah and it's ill-defined yeah I remember being nervous about that with uh I, I had a, I was assured I knew that that show would that Abbott was going to be good but it's yeah. like whoa I did the pilot now we have a whole right show to yeah chip away at. I totally get that yeah and you usually shows take a few something mm -hmm. that Abbott was assured right from the start but mm -hmm. often shows take a little while to find themselves yeah. sometimes the first like 
five or six episodes are yeah, yeah. a little shaky, but Ab it's something that Abbott was was great. Thank great you. I had credit a lot of the other shows before me, shows like Parks and Rec, The Office, I mean, yeah. Good Place, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I, it was amazing getting to watch all my favorite comedies and even older ones like the Andy Griffith show uh -huh. or um, like King of Queens, which is like one of just my old favorites. Yeah, yeah. And just being like, okay, I see what to do, I see what not to do, I see what to do, and, and I hope it works out, but I, there would be like no, um, you know, presumably solid first season of Abbott without me really studying all of the other comedies and yeah. trying to, to uh, now I'm scared because I'm like, damn, I got nothing to build season to. two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you guys set up season two really well in the finale. Yeah, thanks. I was like, you shoot. teed up some really interesting stuff. Yeah, we didn't get the benefit of the. Oh, they'll get it by season three. People were like, no, it was just good, and we yeah. got. Now I'm like, dang, I, now I got an order. It's okay, I'll figure it out. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. The kids just love Miss Davis's class, so it takes a while to get them back, and then everything runs a little late. You know, normally I'd be bothered by my kids being obsessed with another teacher, but I get it. My class, also Davis devotees. Mm. Only way she could be cooler is if she were related to Angela. Not that I think all black people are related. Well, maybe you do. Maybe that was your subconscious speaking. When the the praise started pouring in mm -hmm. for Abbott, mm -hmm. and people started putting, uh, I would imagine it felt like pressure to mm -hmm. you in particular. Um, were you still shooting the show or was it all shot? No, thank God it was all shot. Oh, that's great. Thank God it was yeah. all shot. Um, because that, sh that just got to bounce off of me and uh -huh. be like, cool. Whether it's loved or hated, there's nothing I can do about it. You shot it in a bubble. Shot and, it in yeah. a bubble, which I, I so, I understand that I will never feel that again. I yeah. cherish that bubble that we yeah. got to be in from the the writer's room to the actual filming of the show because there's where we got to build something sure. really sweet. I want us all to stay with that. You know, uh -huh. I'm like, let's pretend we made this show and we knew it was good. We all knew that. Yeah. Let's do the same thing. Let's yeah. pretend we're gonna watch it the first season together as a group and we the people who made it will say, well, here's where we naturally want the story to go next That's season, right. instead of taking in all, I think about that with you guys all the time, people who are part of these legacy sitcoms, yeah. before the internet really exploded, because yeah. I feel like when Parks and Rec was airing, I know Twitter was a thing, but it wasn't as powerful That's right. as it is now, and I felt like because of that, did it feel like the people who made that show and you guys got to be in a bubble for longer? Yeah, I mean, I started, it's a little unique because I started late. I started yeah, like true. end of season two right. when it was already sort of defined. That's right. And I was a fan of it, That's kind of right. walking into it. Yeah. I think well, it was more, like Party Down. You got to Party Down is a really good direct comparison because yeah. we made that first season. Not only did it not air while we were making it, but when it did air, no one watched it anyway. <laughs> so even when we made season two, we were still in that bubble. Yeah. And what that bubble was, and it's been, it was so valuable was we were making the show just for each other mm -hmm, and for mm -hmm. ourselves. Absolutely. And that's enough. Yeah. Because if you're making something that feels good with yeah. your friends, yeah. you don't need anything else. You really don't. You know, and everything that's that it kind of eventually caught on long after it was canceled, right. which is great, but <laughs> um, there's nothing like that feeling when you're connecting with mm. the people you're working with and yeah. you're all really into it. It's unreal. Yeah. We, we all were just so in love with what we were making. Yep. Yeah, I think about that a lot, about the internet's place and how we receive our own work. Like with Severance, that was made before it started airing, right? That's right. Did that feel good? Yeah, because also we shot the whole thing at once, so we mm -hmm. weren't going episode by episode. We were like shooting. Was there a pilot in the pickup or was completely? No, we oh. just shot all nine at the same time. Okay. So we were shooting like something from episode one mm -hmm. and then after lunch, we would shoot episode eight, mm -hmm. and then like through. Oh wow! We did that, and it took like ten months. You find out what happened? She's in the break room. Shit! Is that because of us? And we're not allowed in the outer hallways anymore till we hit quota. So no more interdepartmental visits. I was talking to a friend who's also a writer about a show having a soul, right? Uh -huh. Like. It's very made up by the people who who create the thing. Yeah. And how, to me, that's what makes it stand the test of time yeah. these days. And I feel like Severance has a soul. Like, I was uh -huh. drawn into the show, and I wasn't even sure why. I'm not a big thriller person. Uh -huh. 
I am a big Adam Scott fan. <laughs> I am. That's true. That's so maybe it guy. was partly you. <laughs> but then I, I was drawn, and then past the cliffhangers, I was drawn into kind of the soul of the show, uh -huh. the feeling of like, well, now I work at this company, and right. now I got to figure out what the hell is going on. Right. <laughs> and right. I think that's a great feeling. It's something I wanted to capture with Abbott. I wanted people to feel like they went to Abbott. Yeah. To feel like they went to our school, walked the hallways, and you know, Abbott has jokes, but the jokes are also dependent on the people in the writers are making each other laugh, yeah. and, the, and the characters in the show. And then that making its way down to the set and connecting with them. With them, yeah. which to me creates the soul. That's right. I assume that Severance, although not a comedy, yeah. has a soul, but yeah. is it different from comedy to a thriller? Yeah, it, it is different. And, and that, Severance was unique also because we were shooting during pre-vaccine COVID when mm -hmm. it was like, because we started we started shooting the day after the presidential election in November of 2020. Yeah. And so it was in New York, so it was everything was really kind of locked down. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of this isolation of shooting the show. And you don't even see anyone on the crew's faces, which it's still sort of like that, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But it was just so much more buttoned up and, mm -hmm. and tightened mm -hmm. down because it was pre-vaccine. So we would shoot the show and right after cut, everyone puts their things and their, their shields up and everything. And then I at least was living in an apartment by myself away from my family and stuff. So I would mm -hmm. just go to this apartment and sit by myself and sleeping and then waiting to get picked up again yeah. in the van and then going to Queens shooting and then getting in the van again. So it kind of started this pattern that felt very sort of isolated and sort of parallel to the show yeah, in a way, kind of yeah. emotionally. And I think also when we were on set together, the actors, that was our time during the day to be around people, people. and be able to connect with seeing each other's faces. And yeah. I think the characters too are kind of yearning for yeah. connection. Um, so tied in. Yeah, and each of us were sort of isolated when we were away mm -hmm. from the show. So I think there was a, a sort of emotional pattern that mm -hmm. emerged in making the show where some sort of unanticipated parallels mm -hmm. emerged because we were originally going to start shooting before the pandemic uh, right. hit, and so it was all unintended. But yeah, I think if you were going to kind of find a, the soul of the show, mm -hmm. it might be somewhere in, somewhere there. in there, yeah. I broke protocol this morning. I was dusting the old group photos, the ones with Petey, and it just made me feel sad. So I took them from the cubicles and put them in the storage closet, which we're not supposed to do. Okay, I have some rapid fire questions. Sure. Where was the outside? Is that was that computer generated or is that outside of Lumen real? The the, the driving up to Lumen that right. situation. That's a a real building really? in New Jersey. It used to be Bell Labs oh. back in the day where they would develop technology and right. uh, like. Oh, we still don't know what 60s. Lumen does. I forgot about that. What's that? We still don't know what Lumen does, unless I miss something. Generally, it's like one of those companies that's been around for a long, long time, uh -huh. where you're like eating your cereal and you're like, wait, they make this? That, yeah. And they oh, also wait. make my light bulbs? But that's I, right. I think also they have this culty vibe. They do. Vibe which as is well. so, what's weird. I don't yeah. know if it was the intentions, but that led over into religious territory mm -hmm. for me, which, you know, companies can feel like a cult. Sure. But I, I saw parallels into religion that really stuck with me uh -huh. way more as someone who's just obsessed with researching every religion. And, uh -huh. and I do think about cults. They're just fascinating to yeah. me. The Egan stuff, I was like, ooh, that that is yeah. very interesting and in making a comment that I like very much. Oh, cool. <laughs> like, cool. okay, back to my rapid fires. Sure. Is Zach Cherry really that funny? Yeah. He's so funny. He's the best. What a darling. Do you not know Zach? So I don't know him, yeah. but yesterday I said, I'm going to look up this guy. Yeah. He's so funny. He's so funny. And he follows me on Twitter, and I never, oh. I didn't know, I'd seen his name around, but I didn't know that was you him. You want me to tell him to stop following you? No, no, Twitter? please, please. Okay. I should follow him back. Stop being, I, 
This is what I did in my brain jump, last night. Jump. I was like, it's going to be so weird to follow him back now that I saw him on a show. So right. I'm not going to follow him back. But I, I'll follow him. He'll see this he, and be like, why not just follow me? He's at this like one of those people. That I remember seeing him on um, on Pete Holmes' show. Yeah, uh, crashing, yeah. And he's yes, one of he those on guys crashing. that I would rewind his bits on yeah. that show because he just made me laugh so hard. Is he's, he in Spider he was in Spider Man. He is in Spider Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've just been, I'd be out the loop until things uh, come to me sometimes. It's until okay. they're served on a platter. <laughs> in an Apple. By Apple. <laughs> Apple um, show. Speaking of culty. Uh, anyway, but uh, <laughs> oh, you don't have to use that part. That's okay. I used to work there. And so that's you what's did? interesting. What yeah. Do you, where do you, what did I you do? I did. My publicist told me to stop talking about it. But I was just in FRS and like a lot of this stuff. What's FRS? And FRS. Oh, sorry. You wouldn't even know what that means. I'm sorry. I just said that. Family room specialist. Fancy name for. I fix your phone and your watch and your uh, iPad and at the Apple Store. At the Apple Store. Oh, whoa! Okay, um, my last rapid fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are so good in this. You're also so good Thanks. in Big Little Lies. Thanks. You're also so good in Parks and Recreation. And then you're good when I sh you show up in places. Being, <laughs> I like rewatch Step Brothers the other night, and it used to be my favorite movie in the world. But then I've watched you so much now in, in these other projects that I was like, I can't believe that's Adam Scott. Like, because when I was younger and I was watching it, I didn't yeah. know who you were. Yeah. But now I'm going back and I'm like, holy shit! Like, do you feel like you change? what you're doing? Or do you feel like a constant, a nexus being? Like you uh, just show up in places. And do the same and thing. And do the same thing. It's just thing? your surroundings that change. Yeah, do you feel like that sometimes? I think theoretically, I would like to think that that it, it does, it's, it's just the material and your kind of circumstances mm -hmm. that dictate what you're doing. And, and as an actor, you should just always be doing the same thing. But I, mm. I don't think that's really what I do. I think I, I think you have to adjust depending on Slightly. what you're doing, right? Like if you yeah. if you have some jokes to hit, yeah. there's this, you have to change and, and navigate that differently than mm -hmm. you would if you're just trying to honestly. I, I don't know. It's I don't know. I've been thinking about that uh, more lately because it's Me too. more of a dramatic thing, and mm -hmm. it's just a different responsibility when mm -hmm. you're doing a network sitcom yes you need to make yes. those jokes work yeah exactly you know? yeah on parks it was so beautifully written mm -hmm. and the jokes were so terrific mm -hmm. i didn't want to screw any of them up or just not you know hit them kind of sideways and flatten them out i wanted them to work i remember going and doing something dramatic for the first time after doing yeah parks for a while and i was like oh yeah right this is this is different yeah and having to shift a little bit. That's um, exciting, yeah. I think, as an actor, because, you know, after doing Janine for, you know, months straight yep. on Abbott, I, I remember getting so excited to yeah. come do another thing yeah. in a way that almost felt juvenile. I yeah. felt like a little kid, like I get yeah. to go be uh, someone else today. Yeah, you're guest starring on Party, Party Down. Down. So I am, up. and I was so excited to be there and That's play nice. something so different. I think that's the excitement of acting that I will never get tired of and makes yeah. me, because sometimes I want to just, I'm trying to think about my future right now and I'm like, will I just write or, um, you know, for the rest of my career and eventually stop acting? But that. I hope you don't because you're so good. Thank and, you. And that's, it's what you do on Abbott. By the way, just the what you do on Party Down, the character you play is so vastly different. It's than so different. Janine, it's so different. It's so different. But just as relaxed and connected as yeah. you are on Abbott, and it's what you do on your show is really difficult, which is you're connecting with all the characters and everything, but you're also inviting the audience in mm -hmm. to everything you're feeling and you make it look super easy, but Thanks, that's really Anna. hard. Thank you. It's so good. Thank and, you. and something else I want to say about I studied you guys. On, on parks? parks? Yeah. Yes, 100%. I can't even front. Like, weirdly, you know, Abbott gets compared to The Office a lot. I would say it's a little bit closer to Parks. Uh -huh. It is sitting somewhere in the middle, and mm -hmm. we knew that from the beginning. But I always thought in The Office, the goal was not to invite. Yeah. Right? Nobody there except for, like, Michael was inviting. Right. And his was done in, um, you know, like, s lack of self-awareness. Sure. But in parks, everyone felt very inviting. Sure. Tom, you, as it grew, you know, it grew yeah. to being you, Leslie, clearly. I just 
thought more characters there were like, yeah, welcome to our story. Yeah, and yeah. I think that I studied a lot of that for Janine, the, the welcome to our story. Yeah, people. that's really what I connect with so much with your show and your performance at the center of it is just how invited in I feel yeah. watching it and how connected yeah. I am to it. And I wonder if part of it is that I miss Parks and I miss my friends on Parks. Yeah. And it, not that the show feels like d d directly like Parks, but I, I think what I get from it is that you guys are all loving working on it so much. Yeah. And that, th that's the way we felt yeah. on Parks and Rec. And, yeah. and so that's part, I, I feel like I'm dipping back into that feeling when, I, when I watch the show, which I is really that. nice. I love it. I love that people can find love from different places. Yeah. Okay. I think as the first joint hosted That's right. show in history between non-television show hosts, this was a success. This was, I think, excellent. And I think as far as pilot episodes for global talk shows, it was pretty good. Very good. Pretty good. Variety, yeah. give us a good rating. Please. Yes, thank you. Uh -huh.